The Fishing News is brought to you by Navionics, Okuma, Yozuri, Evinrude, Lama Glass, and the Star Island Yacht Club in Montauk, New York. The November issue of The Fisherman Magazine is out now, and we have the exciting results of the striped bass tagging study that was done back in June. Here's New Jersey Fisherman editor Jim Hutchinson with more. So I think most of you know that back in May, we had a team that included the Fisherman Magazine, Navionics, Gray Fish Tag Research. We we're on two boats, rocket charters out of the East River on Long Island, and the guys from Fin Chasers in New Jersey came and joined us as well. We put two high-tech satellite tags in a couple of post-spawn striped bass in the lower Hudson River. These are $5,000 tags, top of the line. They're used from uh, Stanford University to NOAA Fisheries. They're used to study rooster fish and marlin in Costa Rica. This is the first time these two satellite tags, or any satellite tags, were used to track striped bass for five months at a clip. Now we got the first tag back on a fish called Liberty that we caught in the morning. That tag shows that that fish, after we released it in the Hudson River, came down the Jersey coast in here in the Manasquan River in May before heading out northeast along the south shore of Long Island where it spent Memorial Day weekend and then headed southeast into the canyons. Now I know it's hard to believe, but we got that tag returned. It washed up on the beach in Massachusetts and getting that tag back, it gives us the ability to study everything that's inside. It was not eaten by a larger animal because if it was, it would have, it would have affected the light and also the temperature stored in that tag. So what we hear from gray fish tags is 100% this fish went out to the canyons. You could read the whole story in the November edition of the Fisherman Magazine. We also have it posted on our website at thefisherman.com. I'll also tell you this, we're starting to get the early traces from the second fish, Freedom. It's starting to feed the satellites up in the sky. This thing is floating around out there someplace. So by December, we hope to have the report from what that second fish did. Studying liberty and freedom and finding out where those stripers go after the spawn, right here at The Fisherman. This is the weekend for bass tournaments along the South Shore. For the weekend weather forecast, we go to News 12 meteorologist Rich Von Olin. Thanks, Tim. Hey, anglers, meteorologist Rich Von Olin here at News 12 Long Island Weather Center. Let's check the final weekend of October weather forecast. We'll go to the trusty weather computer, see what we got going on. Water temps, uh, you know, give or take about 60. That's kind of normal for this time of the year. Saturday easily is going to be the pick of the weekend. Uh, one to two, two to four feet offshore, light northerly breeze, eventually going northeast and easterly late in the day. So it'll be your ocean day. And then uh, Sunday, not so good. We start to pick things up. A hard east-southeast going south here with a storm coming in. We'll go quickly uh, four to seven plus feet here throughout the afternoon. So Saturday's good. Again, the model's pretty much holding on to clouds, but uh, light northeasterly breeze most of the day should be fishable in the ocean. And then we start to crank things up. The rain comes in, storm of the west. We're going to start to get a southeast to easterly breeze, eventually south, 15 to 25 on Sunday. So if you had to do some stuff, uh, certainly Saturday, the pick of the weekend, about 60, so a good-looking day. And then uh, Sunday will be in the 60s, but it will be kind of windy. So, again, that's my pick Saturday, last weekend of October, fall run in effect. Good luck, anglers. Get out there and get them. Meteorologist Rich Fodder on News 12 Long Island. Be sure to check out News 12 for the latest weather before heading out. I know everybody has bass on their mind, but not Kirk Fay. Hey, everybody. Uh, you probably think I'm going to be talking about striped bass, but I'm not. You know, it's it's not too hard to go out and catch striped bass. They're all over the place. But the, there is another fish that is around that uh, a lot of people seem to forget this time of the year because they're not easy to catch. They're referred to as ghosts. They pop up. They disappear. Friday is going to be a great shot to target these fish, and I'm talking about bluefin tuna. There's already been reports of guys trolling around Jones, um, spoons and mojos being spooled by uh, bluefin tuna. I got intel from the guys in uh, over in New Jersey that have actually been doing very well, cherry picking some bluefin tuna here and there. Close in, and Friday gives you a great shot at these. Um, if you think they're on bunker pods, I'll tell you what, this is two, two things you want to go with here. This is a Shimano Orca floating stick bait. This is also a strategic angler stick bait. These are great running on bunker pods. And if they're on sand deals, uh, you can't do any better than a Ron Z. So uh, if you get frustrated with all the boat traffic out there chasing bass, well, here's your chance on Friday to go chase something a little bigger and, uh, and have at it. Good luck, and I'll see you next week. Now let's check in with Fred Galifaro with the Montauk Report. 
Hey Tim, yeah, and uh, I tell you, the wind's been wreaking havoc with sailing schedules out in Montauk. Um, good news is, uh, it seems like a new body of bass, schoolies at that, uh, have moved into Montauk early this week. Um, I got reports of clouds of birds and fish busting all over up on top. Unfortunately, the weather kept most boats at the dock. Uh, Captain uh, Savio Mizzi and uh, Jersey Greg, they got out in that east wind on Tuesday and they wore themselves out bucktailing with light tackle, catching over 100 bass before packing it in. Um, that was off Shagwan. So uh, plenty of life out there again. Uh, more important and uh, of more interest to a lot of people at this stage of the season, I think, is the black fishing's gotten off to a great start. Most of the boats are running over to Fishers or Plum Island uh, from the point, but there's also been some decent catches made on the local rock piles for those that know their way around. Uh, also, Block Island, uh, still strong strong action with porgies and sea bass and, and big porgies and sea bass at that. And there's also some cards starting to mix in. So hopefully the weather cooperates, boats can get out. Uh, this weekend, uh, there was some really good fishing to be had. And uh, back to you, Tim. Let's check in with Mike Dean from Shinnecock. Thanks, Tim. Uh, striped bass fishing off the beach has really been spectacular for the last week. We're not getting huge fish that same kind of super schooly size, 26 inches up to a little over keeper size. Uh, at night in the back bays, there's a few bigger fish. There's been a few bigger fish taken off the beach. Uh, a lot of bunker pods out there. We've seen a ton of whales. Uh, a lot of life. Uh, there's also a nice uh, amount of sand eels. So the A27s, bucktails, I've been using the teaser. I think it's been probably the most effective uh, piece of tackle that I've been using in the last probably three weeks. And in terms of black sea bass and blackfish, there's some catches going on. Uh, they're definitely there, but everyone's just kind of chasing those stripers right now. Um, definitely some bigger fish out, uh, a little closer to Mariches than Shinnecock. Um, you know, if you don't need to keep the fish, like I've said in the past, please don't. Uh, we want to protect this resource. Uh, this weekend, weather's looking a little dicey towards the end of the weekend, so get your time in on Saturday, and uh, you're going to be rewarded. Get out there, have fun, catch them up. I'll talk to you next week. Now let's check in with Captain Al from the Great South Bay. Hey, Tim. Fire Island is pretty hot with bass action this week. Uh, not as many really big fish, but still big fish mixed in. A lot of fish on jigs out in the 60, 70 foot depths on the jigs and on the bucket schools tied to the beach. So I'd say that's number one action. And the black fishing has been excellent. Around the Moses Bridge, it's been good. And all the wrecks good as well. And also sea bass on all the pieces offshore. So uh, a lot of action now, a lot of things to do. And we have pretty decent weather coming up in the next few days. If you're looking for a quality fishing boat, one that's affordable, check out a Sea Pro powered by Suzuki. For less than $400 a month, get you into all the action. Visit Cal's Family Boating Center for a test ride today. Let's check in with Paul McCain, reporting from Jones Beach. Hello, Tim. I'm down, I'm down at Jones Beach. Uh, and just to check things out, talking to a few guys. It's been a little on the slower side right now, but... Uh, that could change very shortly. It is getting into the later fall. You got to be out here where the fish are here. There's still a lot of bait in the back bays. Uh, guys that are fishing the, the marshes. Uh, Captain Frank uh, March here. He's been fishing the back, bay, uh, back marsh, plugging up some bass. He's been fishing out front, getting some of the bigger the bass right off the uh, right off the inlet. But with that said. What I really am disappointed is we did not have the albacore that we normally have this time of year. But I do hear out in uh, the North Fork, they're starting to show up pretty heavy, which is good because I plan on being out there next Monday. I'm running a shop trip uh, to Truman Beach. So hopefully we're going to have some albies out there. Uh, on the first water scene, uh, the Loyal Fly Riders had their trip uh, out to the Connecticut this week. Uh, it was a little bit slow, 20 people, but everybody did have fish, but it just wasn't the batter day that everybody's expecting when you fish there. I ran a trip up to the uh, Farmington this past Monday. It was good, but a little bit on the slower side. So, you know, we had, a, it, what can I say? It was beautiful. It's on the be most beautiful river in the Northeast. So, anyway, it is fall. Get out there while you can. It's going to be a long winter. Tight lines, everybody. 
Joey Leggio didn't have time to send over a video, but he did have a great day Saturday with fish up to 40 pounds. Check out Joey's latest video on tackle for trolling. Click on the card in the corner or check out this video's description for the link to his latest video. Chris Ludwig, where are you reporting from today? Thank you, Tim. What's going on, guys? This is going to be a real quick one today. So, freshwater side of things, my girl and I, we walked this local stream and we were pitching some baits at these carp. We were using little 1 0 circle hooks and pieces of dough and they were sucking them up. Um, I'll attach some videos of that. That was pretty fun. Uh, saltwater side of things, I walked around the jetty of West End 2 last night and I was throwing, I'm sorry, two nights ago and I was throwing around live eels. I didn't get any bumps, but I was uh, throwing bucktails into the open surf and there was some schooly bass there. But the Atlantic Beach Bridge has had fish blowing up all over it. And this morning, I got some intelligence from my friend Rob that they were still blitzing, you know, at this very moment. So there's a lot of bass on the inside and the inlets, and especially on the outside. There was guys last weekend on this jig bite in about 50 feet of water off the needle at Jones, and they were putting a hammer in on um, Sorry for the, you know, hectic report, but thank you guys. Let's get the Staten Island report from Mike Sentry. Thanks, Tim. Hey guys, Mike Century here. Well, I'm in my garage getting ready for tomorrow's fishing trip. Conditions looking pretty promising. I want to tell you, last Saturday I had a killer, killer day. Went out by myself. Went out between uh, Greasy Point and Sandy Hook. Hit the Ambrose Channel between 6.15 to about 8 o'clock in the morning. Landed nice bass between 28 to 33 pounds. Six bass total, four on 20 Maggio number four spoons and two on the 20 Maggio tandem white mojos. I believe those were uh, eight ounce, four ounce. Success was there. You had to go a little bit deep for them. Slow down your troll. The uh, bite stopped, and uh, one of my buddies there caught a nice thresher shark. Landed, it's about maybe 300 pounds on the bunker spoon. It's been all over the news, all over the uh, social media. I was by myself, headed out towards Fire Island, Long Island, following some of the big name charter boats. And uh, boy, the captured princess, that guy knows what he's doing. He put me on a lot of fish. And we had a good time. I was using the 4.5 ounce, it's a crippled herring. It's about maybe four inches long. It's uh, blue and uh, silver. Produces a lot of fish. I was jigging it on the bottom and letting it drop. Believe it or not, between the striped bass, the schoolies, and the nice sized bass up to 25 pounds in Fire Island, caught a lot of weak fish on this. Between 30 to 40 weak fish, all between 15 to 16 um, inches. Long and behold, I could, I could actually kept one legally, but I chose not to. I decided to do a little bit of trolling, a little bit closer towards the uh, Jones Beach area. With that said, trolled back up north towards home. Uh, caught quite a few more schoolie bass on the uh, Rapalus deep dives around 25, 30 footers. Those were actually producing. A lot of people were on top water, uh, uh, using top water plugs and jigging them halfway in between. But the Rapalus produced that day also. And uh, well, for tomorrow, I'm going to go out, do a little bit of trolling, do a little bit of jigging also with this nice jig. And uh, I'm going to have a buddy of mine with me so he could actually film some of this action. And I'm going to leave you off with my friend, uh, Joe Goliath. He went out Raritan Bay a couple of days ago, had a stellar day, him and his buddies. So check him out, some nice 40 pound fish, up to 45 pound fish to be exact. Well guys, Mike Sentry, take care of yourself guys, type lines, keep them fish coming. From Huntington Harbor, we have Dave Yeagerman. Hey, Tim. Dave Yeagerman, Salty Fly Rodders. I'm here with Lou Minganelli. He's actually my cameraman right now. We're in Huntington Harbor and throwing a few flies. Got a fish on. They're not huge, but this is a beautiful spot. The fish are around, the baits are around. And I advise anyone who can fish any of the back bays on the North Shore to get out because we're really having a great time out here. Thank you, Tim. From the North Shore, we have Captain Mark McGowan. Hey guys, I'm sitting here at the shop. It's the morning. I'm like pulling on my teeth because the fishing is red hot. I gotta tell you, I blackfish, sea bass, bluefish, striped bass, bonita. I'm telling you, the bait is stacked. These fish are on peanut bunker. Uh, blackfish, uh, guys that are doing the shallow bite are just knocking them out. We went out, we hit this uh, 48 foot section of water on the wrecks and the rocks. That's dynamite too. We've been bringing up quality fish on our jigs. 
And I gotta tell you, we have not had Asians. I tell you, it seems like there's been a general lack of Asian crabs here on the North Shore, much different than previous years. So we've been primarily, we're just all about the green crabs and there's no lack of uh, bites. I'm telling you, uh, bam, bam, bam. It's just lights out fishing. You gotta get out there. People that are just not, not getting this opportunity, if you're only fishing the weekends, Figure out something to get out of work during the weakest. You see that weather is going to be down below 15, 20 miles an hour. You got to go. I'm telling you, this is just dynamite fishing. It doesn't get better than this on the North Shore right now. Whether you're fishing down by the river on bass and bluefish, trying blackfish up by the uh, Smithtown Reef. You work in the triangle area inside Comset or getting across the Com to uh, Connecticut to hit that shallow water bite. Um, you got to go. I'm telling you, non-stop fishing. If you're not out there, you're missing out big time. And uh, there's nothing more I can say. I hope my excitement gets you out there because now is the time to go. Uh, the beach bite, red hot still. If you're on the south shore, up here on the north shore, we had some larger bluefish move in. They're on top water inside the harbors. Bonita in the back of the harbors. Bonita outside the front of the harbors. It's just really, really great fishing. So I really implore you all to get out there. How many times can I say really? <laughs> A lot. And it's really, really important you get out there. So until next time, tight lines. I hope to see you on the water. And if you need any advice, always feel free to call us at the shop. No aloha this week, but we do have Kenny Cannon with the latest report from the North Shore. Thanks, Tim. The fishing here in the Northport, Ashrock, and Eaton's Neck area has been really good and really consistent. The striped bass have been pretty much everywhere. Uh, the further back in the harbors that you get, the better chance you have at catching them and catching them consistently. The fish have been very small, uh, 15 to 18 inches, I would say, and pretty much I'm catching them all on tsunami sand eels. A um, couple on a little paddle tail, but pretty much every fish I've been catching, tsunami sand eels been the way to go. And it's usually like an hour before uh, sunset, right up until like when it gets really dark, and then uh, in the morning as well, before the sun rises, and then about an hour after. Usually the fishing around me shuts down at around eight o'clock. So right when I'm getting there after I drop the kids off at school, that's when they stop biting. So uh, that's what I'm gonna be focusing on this weekend. It's a great time to get the kids out as well, because again, the fish are pretty much everywhere. If you have a tsunami sand deal on your rod, you're probably gonna do pretty well if you get in the back of the harbor. So that's what I'm gonna be focusing on this weekend. Uh, that's all for the Northport, Ashrogan, Eaton's Neck area, and we'll talk to you next week. Back to you, Tim. Back to Fred Galafaro with our surf report. Yeah, Tim, surf, still a lot of good action going on, uh, predominantly those school fish, uh, but a lot of them. And here and there, scattered locations, some better quality fish. Uh, starting at Montauk, uh, pretty quiet the last week or two out there on the beach. But a new body, a big body of small fish did move into the rips the last couple of days. And uh, who knows, the right conditions, they should be on the beach. There are guys out there trying, just haven't heard any reports back yet from the beach on those fish. Uh, once you get down like Southampton, a lot of good action along those beaches, according to Canada, tight lines, bait and tackle in Sag Harbor. Uh, further west, uh, the West Hampton beaches, you know, down to Cupsog. Again, some very good action along there. Um, one of the hot spots this past week has been that uh, stretch from Smith Point down through Finns. Uh, a lot of good reports coming from there. Some days fish all day long. And on Sunday, there were fish spread along the whole stretch of Smith Point and some four, four miles of beach, five miles of beach. So um, a lot of fish along there. Uh, did get a report. Uh, Nick uh, Sparata and his son Joe, uh, they fish bottle plugs somewhere along that stretch at night, uh, one night during the week. And they had a number of bass from 15 to 34 pounds. So there are some quality fish around if you hit it right. Also, there's a lot of, lot of bunkers spread along the beach from out east all the way back. And if you're fortunate enough to be in the right place at the right time when the bunker push in close, and if there happen to be some fish on them, you have a shot at a big fish. But otherwise, it's mostly fish from 22 to 28 inches, some 30 inches mixed in. But again, plenty of action and a lot of fun. Uh, that spreads down through Jones uh, all the way. Uh, Ralph over at Bernie's Tackle in Sheepshead Bay simply said the bass are everywhere, you know, along, along the beaches in that area. 
uh, mostly on sand eels. A lot, of, a lot of guys during the day throwing diamond jigs with uh, wood tubes, uh, deadly dicks, uh, uh, sand, swim eels, the uh, tsunami swim eels work good when the conditions are right, when you can throw them, it's not too windy or too rough. And the swim sheds uh, also taking a lot of fish in different areas. Um, Still plenty of peanut bunker in the bays, some peanut bunker starting to come out, so the swim sheds work really well there. Uh, Paulie over at uh, J and J Tackle in Patchogue, uh, you know, in addition to all the uh, fishing along the ocean beaches, some really good action on the piers uh, at the end of last week, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Uh, still plenty of fish in the bay, but the pier action slowed down. Uh, the local docks, Patchogue, uh, Bayport, Blue Point, Bellport, that stretch there. Uh, I know uh, Tuesday morning there were clouds of birds and fish working out of casting range off uh, Patchogue Dock. So expect again under the right conditions those fish should be uh, accessible from the dock. So just keep an eye on that. It's a great backup and it's real easy fishing if you don't have a lot of time to get over to the beach. Um, don't forget uh, also uh, the North Shore, Central North Shore, Phil uh, over at Cow Harbor said uh, lots of small bass in that area, all the way from Eaton's Neck down through Sunken Meadow. Uh, and a lot of that's early morning action. And that goes for the same on the South Shore. Some of the most consistent and best fishing has been that early morning bite. Uh, then out on the North Fork, I was getting some good reports of, uh, of bass, blues, and some albies out there. And it seems like albies have disappeared in most areas, but still some out there on the North Fork. And uh, just a word, uh, a word to the wise. Uh, Apparently, uh, a fisherman got involved with one of the residents out there uh, on the North Fork. And uh, just a note of caution, parking along the access road uh, to Petty's Bite in Mulford um, is apparently off limits now. And uh, the police are saying that you will be towed if it's not a resident vehicle. So uh, be careful out there. And uh, don't forget, this weekend we got the South Shore Classic, the Babylon Surf Cup, and the Gathering of Anglers all running from Friday through Sunday. So check out the details at thefisherman.com on our events calendar uh, or in the uh, uh, news briefs in the print edition. Tim, that wraps it up for this week. And we have another surf report from contributor Matt Broderick. Hi, thanks, Tim. Uh, today we had a good day of fishing on the North Shore of Long Island. Some albies around. Well, we had a few big fat albies that were feeding on small rain bait. Um, a lot of schoolies in the mix too. They're blitzing right at our feet at one point. A ton of them. You know, almost every cast we had them on small poxy jigs, um, small tins too. After that, we switched over to blackfish with some green crabs, and we did pretty well with that too. We got a bunch of shorts and a couple of keepers to bring home for the dinner table. Uh, as far as the South Shore goes, there's been a lot of small bass around, taking tins in the morning. Uh, bucktails as well. At night it's been the same thing. There's been occasional keepers in the mix, but besides that, nothing really on big fish. They've been a little bit further out, but tons of small fish to go around and plenty of season left to get them. Mark your calendars for November 11th and 10th. Steigercraft will be holding their open house. Even if you're not in the market for a boat, come see for yourself how these rugged fishing boats are built right here on Long Island. There'll be door prizes, food, and drink. It's from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m both days. If you'd like to be part of our weekly video fishing forecast, we're looking for social media savvy anglers for hyperlocal reporting from around the New York metro and Long Island area. So if you're a captain, a tackle shop, or just an avid angler, contact me at libayrat at gmail.com. Remember, like our video, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and tap on the bell to be notified instantly when we post a new video on YouTube. And of course, be a subscriber to the Fisherman Magazine to be part of the Dream Boat Contest, like New England fisherman subscriber here, Sam Dibner, with his 11.55 pound blackfish, or Long Island fisherman subscriber, Frank Defeaty, with his 7 pound blackfish. So, many choices for this weekend coming up. Get out there, enjoy a great day on the water, and hopefully my cold will be gone by next week. This is Tim C. Smith for thefisherman.com. Win the incredible Steigercraft, Evinrude Lorance Grand Prize Boat Package, and more in the Fisherman's 2019 Dream Boat Fishing Challenge. Get the details now at thefisherman.com.